Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today, I'm here with Victor Hammerberg. Uh, you may know him as Victor Studio on Instagram. Uh, he's a really talented visual artist and designer, and I'm really excited to talk to him today. So how's it going, man? Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, I'm doing great. A little nervous, but uh, so yeah. real <laughs> to be doing something like this, even. I don't know. It's just amazing and awesome and been listening to all the podcasts over again, you know, yeah. leading up to this. And it's just cool to be here. You know, I've just been listening and, you know, being a sort of audience member. And now I'm here <laughs> yeah. entertaining or trying to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I noticed a lot of people, they'll tell me like, yeah, I listened to like all of them right before because I wanted to make sure <laughs> yeah. I knew what I was doing or whatever. And some people are exactly. nervous and, and they'll say, oh, I've never done this or I don't know what I'm doing. And I always try to reassure them like, I don't know what I'm doing either. I've just not known what I've done more times, you know? So it's, it's kind of yeah. all the same. So, uh, what have you kind of been doing this week? Well, this week I just finished getting sick. So, or getting well after having a cold, I think, uh, uh I got the order, the home kit Corona test. So that's what I've been doing this week. But, um, it's been a really hectic time, like leading up to that week. I've been, uh, I feel like I can say that this is the first month that I'm completely comfortable being a freelancer in the time since I started this Instagram project mm -hmm. or whatever you want to say. So that's good. So yeah. by that, you mean like, uh, this is your first month you've kind of met like this amount of money you feel like you need each month, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Basically like enough money to, you know, sort of start thinking about more things than surviving kind of, you know, thinking yeah. about how can I invest back in the company? How can I, you know, yeah, start it's weird. I've already something. noticed freelancing, like compared to when I was, cause I've only, this is only my second month. The first month was super good. Second month's going all right. But I feel like the first one kind of hyped it up <laughs> cause I did really well for whatever reason. Cause it was like yeah. fresh on the scene or whatever, you know, but, um, I noticed that when I was working at my like salary job every month, I'd get the same amount. So I was really good at figuring out like, save this, this goes here, this goes there. When you don't get the yeah. same amount, it's hard to even know how to save. Cause you feel like, well, let's just put it towards like the next month's budget. That way, if I don't have money that month, I'll be yeah. good. <laughs> no, exactly. I feel like a lot of the time, that's like one of the things that's always tempting about, you know, taking that route which I think has tempted everyone at some point, you know, at least trying it out because it's like the safe way. And, uh, it's like, you know, you're not going out trying to be an influencer kind of, you're more, you know, yeah. <laughs> making your pet out and being like, see, I can do this. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, real. it's funny. Cause I see people online. Um, I've always been like an employee, like graphic designer. Like I've had a, like a, maybe three or four jobs in the past, like th three, four years that are all, you know, where I'm getting paid and it's like, I have like insurance or whatever and whatnot. But I realized yeah. like a lot of the people that are in those positions, they, they just think, oh, I wish I could just freelance full time. And the freelancers are kind of thinking, I wish I had a job because it's more safe. Yeah. <laughs> you never get what yeah, you want, you know, it's just kind of like a paradox like, of life. <laughs> yeah. It's just the grass is always greener, you know, and it's like, whatever. At the end of the day, if For you're... Sure as long as like you're making enough, it's like, isn't that what we all want? You know, it's like, if you make enough and you're fine and you're doing things that you like that are fun, I'd rather it be freelance than something that sucks and barely making enough still. So yeah, it's like hundred percent. Um, so have you, what have you kind of been working on then in the past month that was put you over that line? I mean, it's like I actually landed the like my biggest client so far. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. I don't think I'm allowed to say oh, who okay. it is. But but uh, so that's been taking up some of my time. And uh, I live in Sweden, so I've sort of been slowly um, making my way into the Swedish entertainment scene, so to speak. You know, trying to get local artists and clients like trying to make a, a statement, you know, it's hard to go worldwide right away. So I'm sort yeah. of going local and, you know, focusing. So maybe like word gets around that I do stuff for Swedish artists and then, you know, that could help me in some way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
but I mean, my workload, it's pretty much all album artwork, at least, you know, where that's where the money is for me right now. That's pretty much what I'm doing. And that's what allows me to kind of take this freelance route comfortably at the moment, I would Mm -hmm. say. Yeah, I feel like your style kind of caters to that too. It, it it looks really good in like prints and album artwork and stuff that is very um kind of like you want to send a message, but it, it can be a little bit more like art based or abstract rather than like design where it's like pure information, you know, and like trying to communicate like all this type. You have like a cool, you know, like the photo manipulation stuff. I always think that is like some of the strongest album art you can get because not only is it a photo, but there's actually design behind it. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds for the artist. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I mean, I agree. And, and the extent, like it's sort of, it's interesting to, to hear you say it because I always think it in my head that I, that's sort of my philosophy, exactly what you're saying. But Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know when you put words on it, it makes it sort of clear because that's that's exactly like my mind process too it's like i want to in a weird way if you know if you make it a little cheesy and literal it's like yeah i'm kind of designing because i think like album arts is one of the nicest way to present art in the modern way that's still consumer friendly you know in the Mm -hmm. sense that it's like that's where art really shines in the modern age i feel like and you know canvas is coming up and that's scaring the shit out of me because (laughs) No, we all got to do that shit too. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like uh, with art, um, with album art, what's nice is there's really like a big barrier to entry, I feel like, for people to just buy, you know, art or prints or just straight up design. Because if they don't like art, if they're not obsessed with your work, it's kind of, they're not really getting anything out of it other than having it. So if you make cool yeah. art for a, uh, a band or a rapper artist whatever and the music's dope too it's like it's a win-win because sometimes i'll buy old vinyl just because i like the designs and i'll just have it <laughs> I do the, same. The, the, the songs may suck but if they're good it's even better you know it's like a double yeah. win no I, I i always go to second hands and look for old vinyls and stuff just to collect them for the artwork mostly <laughs> mm-hmm. so. yeah it's crazy like out here in la it's such a like so many hipsters and everything is thrift stores and old record shops that you can, you can almost not like find stuff anymore. Cause you'll see an old shitty record and you're like, Oh cool. And then someone they're charging like $20 for it though. And you're like, Oh, it's, this is like All right. <laughs> some weird, like curated little thrift shop, you know? <laughs> Urban but, outfitters. Vintage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything is like that. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty annoying. But then at the same time, I understand why they upcharge at places like that. Cause they're, you know, they're charging for the idea that you didn't have to look through everything. Like they kind of set it up for you or whatever. But, um, back to kind of your, I was talking about your style a little, do you think that like, cause I was reading on a little bit on your Instagram, what do they call them? Like the highlights. Cause you did some like cute, uh, like a FAQ or something like that. And I was kind of looking at that stuff. And I saw that it said that you don't really have like a formal background in like um, art or design. And I was wondering, where do you think you kind of came up with this style like over time or how was like the origin of it? Uh, It's like a very like unconventional route. I think I took, it's just more of like when I was very young, I, uh, I played around with paint. Like I just always liked drawing like that kind of kid. I always had like, drawings on my arms and you know thought that was kind of cool and yeah. stuff like that and it was pretty much like i knew i wanted to design from a young age but i thought design was pretty much i googled graphic design and i thought it was like road signs and websites and logos and stuff like that right so i went to high school in singapore and uh i took some art classes but it wasn't like i got like a d minus on it so it wasn't like yeah my it didn't really click for me then. Uh, after that, I took a year off and then I just played video games. And then my parents pretty much forced me out of their basement to go to university. And the university was sort of like a polytechnic, like a practical university where you get to, you know, try to work with clients and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So we got some cool clients like Red Bull and stuff. But 
it wasn't a design school. It was just like a more like a creative uh, team building kind of school, like a marketing or something. Like a, like... Yeah, more like a like a hipster office workspace virtual kind yeah. of thing where people just learn how to be, you know, modern and forward thinking. And that got me like two jobs at agencies, like normal design agencies that make apps and stuff like that. So I did the hard grind of that for like two years. And uh, yeah, <laughs> after that, I got fired from my second job. It was a mix of economics and me not, I basically had to take a train to another country from this <laughs> really? the north of Sweden yeah. to Denmark, two hours back. It took two hours there and two hours back. So I had to, you know, go back and forth for work. So mm -hmm. if I overstepped by like 10 minutes, it was like, you know, an extra hour trip. So it was like, I don't know, it just wasn't clicking for me. And uh, I ended up being a substitute teacher at my mom's school in my hometown for a good year. And that's yeah. when I started the Instagram account, which was like three years ago or something. So, I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> I never planned on, you know, getting this far, you know, I was always, you know, I can work my way up in an agency and I can, you know, make enough money to do my hobbies, which is, you know, pr producing music and mm -hmm. cruising on my penny board and stuff like that. <laughs> it's funny that just imagining you watching all these little kids running around and you're just designing like these super gnarly graphics like on your laptop while they're just running around <laughs> yeah. finger painting and shit and you're over here making like skulls and stuff. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, how I was going to ask you that too. That's a good um, kind of segue is how was it going? Because you lived in Sweden and then you said you went to school in Singapore do you think yeah. that kind of being exposed to those different cultures like influenced your art and design and stuff? I would like to think so, at least. I mean, you know, when you come back to your hometown after being away for a while, you kind of get a lot of perspectives because mm -hmm. for the most part, people haven't, you know, been away for the same time you have. So you kind of see the differences very clearly. And I think especially for my hometown, which is like 15,000 people, it's like, you know, it's a village pretty much. Mm -hmm. And going to Singapore with like 5 million people in the same area, which is, you know, metropolis yeah, and super strict. And, you know, Sweden's very like open-minded, you know, feminist generally, whereas Singapore is like a dictatorship with like, you can't even, they have the death penalty on weed, you know, for 10 grams, you get a death, you, you get hung. Damn, that's so crazy. That, so, yeah, because you know, Sweden and a lot of those uh, European countries, they're kind of like the poster child of like progressive thinking and like liberal yeah. ideas and stuff. And then Singapore, China is like obviously not that at all. <laughs> but Singapore, I feel like is interesting because in Shanghai, I think a little bit as well, they have, you know, they are that, but then they also have like all these, this big like technology and it's almost like like New York or something or Tokyo in a way yeah. is they have like a lot of companies you'll see, you look on their website, it'll say like Los Angeles, New York, Shanghai, or like something like that. Like they, a lot of companies are putting things in China, which is really interesting. Yeah. It's weird actually to see, cause it's kind of like a paradox because it's like the companies say they're <laughs> or like they're saying something, but the country is saying something else. Like, Singapore is another good example because it's really like a blooming sort of Asian, what do you call it, Silicon Valley. Okay, yeah. Because it's, you know, like really, they really cater to entrepreneurs and that sort of open-minded thinking. And at the same time, they're like executing people for <laughs> drawing graffiti. So it's like yeah. very contradictive, all those kind of it's gonna. Things. That's interesting because like you're saying the weed thing and I feel like Silicon Valley has all those things where it's like all the weed delivery places and stuff. And that'd yeah. be like, so just so ironic if they built like one of those places over there and then they were like, but don't order it. Cause we'll take you <laughs> out. <order> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's no, cool though. I think it's good though. Like even if regardless of like the experience in terms of like what you prefer more, like where you were living, I think it's always good to go to other places and just, take you out of like your environment you know when you're too comfortable it's really hard to grow like I know 
where I live, a lot of people, I went to school, it was like eight hours away. It was still in the same state. It was kind of just like, I live in the bottom and it's all the way Northern California. I went to school and, uh, right. even that, it feels like a whole different place. Cause the politics are different. The people are different. The weather is very different. Everything, even though it's the same yeah. state. And I feel like I'm not a big advocate for school in terms of like, oh, I learned so much at, at college for design and stuff. However, just being there, I learned a lot, like from people and meeting people and working with other people and just being uncomfortable and having to having to try to freelance while I'm a college student and make money just to buy food and beer and shit, you know? And <laughs> if I was at home, a lot of people I knew, I'd come back for visit on holidays and it's like, no not in a bad way. It's like everyone's has their own journey and path, but they were kind of still, every time I'd come back, they were kind of still in the same place. And I was like, Hmm. Yeah. That's, a, that's kind of what I was getting at too. But it's like, no, no offense, but it's like, I understand what you're trying to say. And I agree. Yeah. And it's hard. Cause you know, you want people, you want all the people, you know, to like succeed, but there's no way of like, I, I don't think I'm nice enough to approach that subject without sounding like a complete asshole and being like, yo, yeah. fucking get your shit together. Like, what are you doing? You know, yeah. it's kind of yeah. hard. Yeah. But I think everyone should at least try to go somewhere else at some point before you're maybe 100%. 25, you know, or something. So you can kind of just get a different perspective. And I think you'll just benefit. I don't think anything like even if the experience sucks, I think the hindsight will be worth it just for that. Yeah, always. So your other day job, I guess I know you're freelancing now, but you were just doing like pretty much um, like UI design and stuff. You said. Yeah. Uh, so the first agency, I don't know if you they had like a hit game called Monument Valley mm -hmm. like a while back. Um, what's it called the agency monument valley oh the the agency is called us too okay. they're pretty like mid-tier agency i would say they have offices in london and new york and stuff mm -hmm. and that that was pretty much you know like the stereotypical like getting people coffee designer entry mm -hmm. level internship kind of vibe where i just i did my own designs on my laptop and when they asked me to do something i would but it was, you know, more like a learning experience being in that environment and, you know, seeing, I don't know, the kind of like the, you know, what do you say, uh, progressive workspace with, you know, the table tennis and the, you know, Silicon Valley FIFA tournaments and all that. Yeah. Uh, so that was nice to see, you know, the first glimpse of the office world was that. So I that worked in cool. an office like that and I always, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, it's just kind of bullshit in a way. Like all that stuff's cool, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, I don't want fucking a rock climbing wall. Like I want another <laughs> dollar an hour pay, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I don't care that you're, you have like a full fridge of stump town cold brew. Like I'd much rather have yeah. uh, insurance or some shit, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah. they, they try to yeah, like, you look at the eat. website and it's like, benefits and you look you're like oh benefits hell yeah you're, you're thinking like they got like retirement accounts or something and it just says like yoga on wednesdays or whatever and it's, yeah. it's kind of and i always found it weird Mindful because this. they're like yeah we got this we got this but you can only really use it like when you're off work and it's like i don't want to stay later just to play fifa with some people that i kind of yeah. like so it was always they don't want to use it too much during work hours either. So it's kind of like you know a crux yeah. where you're just like never happy with it. Like the, I would always, I worked at a big architecture office. Is the the thing I'm thinking of in my head, and I always felt like since I was just a graphic designer, lower level doing like presentations and stuff, I always felt if I went over to the ping pong table at like two o'clock, <laughs> they, they would all be looking all the like, you know, uh, what do they call them? the principals like the big architect designers would just be like yeah. who is this kid i don't even know him and he's over here <laughs> just playing folding up the thing and playing it by myself you know yeah but it, yeah. it's cool you got that because it's the same thing like i was talking about with the um with the moving away like i'm glad i've worked in all these different places because now i know what i like and now i know what kind of jobs i don't like so if i need to get another job within a year or two um I can kind of know what to look for and be not get into a bad situation again. Yeah, for sure. Um, so 
we talked a little bit about your kind of origin of like how you went, how you didn't go to school and you became a teacher and things. But when do you think you started developing out like this specific style that you have that you see on Instagram? I think like the style people would associate me with now, it's kind of weird how not easily it started, but I think it sort of can all come down to going from posting with the black box and deciding, okay, now I'm going to post as a square and take out the border and not do posters anymore. Right. And that's sort of naturally the composition, like you said, it all connects. It's like the album artwork, the square. It's like, I wanted that to be my canvas now because I wanted it to be more organic in a sense. So I wanted to take away that factor. And I think that's sort of what really, you know, skyrocketed that kind of style into it yeah. because it worked so well. And like, there is, you know, pros and cons because I really noticed that m m you making typography in square formats or using any of this formats that Instagram has, it's like way harder to make it look nice than when you put it in a poster mm -hmm. with a black square around it for some reason. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, but I think that's sort of what really, you know, opened me up to, you know, sort of because the poster thing was like, that's what I owe my whole start to that's what mm -hmm. you know started the whole thing but then i think that's sort of when i got my ad identity more when i you know took away that black box and you know started taking away hashtags and all that stuff and you know it's like you're using all the tools instagram has to, you know get you up there and then slowly you're you know force gumping and you know taking off the the braces of your legs kind of running <laughs> yeah one by one yeah that's interesting I, I know what you mean there's something about even when I'm designing in the like even if I do a poster I try to do it in the size of the the landscape of Instagram like the 1080 by yeah. 1350 or whatever which comes yeah. out to like a 16 by 20 print that's what I usually design in and even um when you put it on the background and then zoom it out sometimes it just looks better for some reason it's like such a weird yeah. thing because i don't know why it why is. does putting it on a black background make it look better i don't know i don't know if there's an explanation for that but it kind of does and I, i'm really torn on that whole style because it's obviously been like the most overused thing on instagram but also like one of the best things that kind of people have done so it's kind of yeah. like a it's almost like infamous in that way yeah but i feel like it's almost come to a point where it's sort of like it's like become a part of the instagram filter to say that i'm a designer kind of mm -hmm. it's like almost that theme of the designer side of instagram is like using black to you know put the design in context kind of like okay this is a design this is how you should approach consuming it kind of mm -hmm. so it's like automatic when you see the black box okay design design whereas otherwise it's like is it artwork is it yeah that's yeah. true because if you look at it in the square or any other um orientation and it's there's no there's it's almost like the bleed could go forever you know what is this yeah, cropped yeah, exactly. is it not cropped how big is this supposed to be or then you swipe and people have like all the different little zoomed in versions and you're like, hmm, I don't really know what size this is supposed to be. But yeah, I think yeah. it's also became a tool for kind of like, oh, you're just starting out design, like do a poster every day and put it on black and now you'll become like, in the, like cool yeah. or something in that community, <laughs> which is weird. But I think, you, I think it's a good move that you made and that I, I do... Like you do have a separate identity from a lot of this other stuff that I think we're talking about. And I really like a lot of your work because some of it almost looks like it's not designed. And that's what I like about it. It looks real because it's like so like your Photoshop skills are nasty, you know, like it's so blended and stuff that it looks like basically like a weird photograph, you know, a lot of the times. Yeah. I guess that's sort of a subconscious route I've been taking as well, because that's also something I've always had in mind when designing, I guess, when you asked me about, you know, taking this whole, this new aesthetic that I've mm -hmm. sort of taken is, you know, surrealism is sort of like the basis for any design that I do kind of, because 
it's like sort of, you know, I'm looking through stock photos or, you know, thinking about ideas and stuff and I'll find something and it's usually the process is sort of like, okay, can I turn this on its head mm-hmm. without it feeling what it, everything just feels exactly right. But when you look at it, it's like your brain accepts it, but your mind like tells you, no, this is wrong. So it's like, I don't know. It's like, I, I, I don't know how to explain this well, but it's kind of like, I will, it's like pornographic in a tiny yeah. way. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's, it's almost like meant to be like, Oh no, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. <laughs> Like one that I'm thinking of right now is um, you have that one post that is like the mouth and it's like the braces and you have, oh yeah, you just look at that and you're like, this is just some gross like picture from the orthodontist or whatever. Right. And then you look yeah. at it more and you're like, oh, I don't think they'd be using like that hue of like the little spreaders, like that's straight neon green. And then you look even closer yeah. And you see your little, um, the little like logo, the slanted VH thing on the braces. And you're like, oh, cheeky, you know, like he got it in there. And it, it's like, shit like that's cool. Cause I'd like to think that half the people look at your work and think it's like a photo sometimes, but then the people that look deeper and understand it, they get that like extra, like, oh, hell yeah. Like the second meaning, you know, they get to look further yeah. into it. I'm really glad you brought that up as well, because that's also one of my sort of incentives is that I like abstract. You probably can tell, but like, I like, you know, the challenge for me is making something as abstract as possible. And mm-hmm. like, there's so many times that I've been working on posts and I know like, okay, these sexy ass black letters are going to get me another thousand likes, but I want to clean this sort of, you know, and it's like always that temptation to, you know, like almost, it's almost like you're, you know, risking it all kind of every time because yeah. it's like, there's a big chance that this could just not make sense at all. Right. And I've just been working on it. So to me, it makes sense because I know the origin and stuff, but to someone else who just sees it on, you know, face value would be like, no. <laughs> so yeah. It, it, yeah. I like that you talk about that, like risking it all. And it's like every time you do something that like feeds the algorithm and it feels like you get that like hit of serotonin or whatever. And it's like something just blows up for no reason in your head. It's like really hard to not want to just like make 10 more things that look kind of like that. You know, you have to really decide, you know where your kind of moral like compass is in terms of like your integrity as like an artist. Like it's not, I'm not saying that it's bad to do that, but do you want to, do you not, you do, as long as you don't feel bad, you don't want to just post stuff that you feel bad that you posted it. Cause you knew it was just for like whatever engagement or whatever you want to call it. Like the, like I've found myself falling into that trap with like reels and shit, just because I see how like much, it does for the other people. And I'm like, Jesus, like, it seems like this is like the only way to get your work spread out on Instagram now. And I'll try, I try it and it works. And then you're like, damn, it works so well. Like, I feel like I'm (laughs) going to make more and just more and more. And it's almost like you, I'm using those as like a, uh, an ad, you know, that goes out to like way more people than a normal post would. And then hopefully, 10 to 20% of the people that saw that will click in and look at the shit I actually care about, you know? No, yeah, that's exactly the way to go, I think. But you never know because the, the next day, you know, they, they switch it up. So if, if like how it works, the algorithms and whatnot. So it, if you're always trying to chase that, you're never really going to win. You're just going to be stuck like yeah. stressing out about it. I think the best approach is to like you said, like be authentic and get it, get down and like figure out your identity and really just unapologetically be like yourself about it. Just post like whatever you want kind of. And, you know, given that's like my mentality still, you know, I compromise so much of my, I don't know that I guess that's one of the cruxes of being like an artist or creative because you're always like, you are making work for people to consume Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, kind of. So it's, it's like a, fun scary balance that whole thing you know yeah because you you kind of in your head start to figure out especially when doing the post for every day challenge like okay i know this works i know this doesn't work 
I know this will get <laughs> this, yeah. this amount of attention and yeah. But then again, sometimes it just like knocks on your head. You're like a hundred percent sure this is going to blow up. And then it just like, this is your worst post since you started. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. What's funny about that is on, on YouTube, they like, they let you know that it's like the worst thing that you put. Cause every oh, time no. you post in the, the analytics, it'll <laughs> say, it'll show this is how good this is done compared to the last 10 things that you uploaded. Right. And it'll say within the first hour, within the second hour, third hour. And it just shows you like, until you post something else, how much that got versus the other 10 in this amount of time. And when you get a 10, like a 10 of 10, you're like, fuck this, this sucks. Cause it's just at the bottom and, and it, it's not any worse oh, no. or better. It's just whatever happened with the way that it, it spread out, you know, it just, did bad and but then you get a one and you're like fuck yeah this one's like this shit's <laughs> yeah. sick you know because it got double the amount of views in the first hour or whatever and i think uh there's this youtuber i watch i, I talked about this on another podcast it's his name's like ali abdal he's like this dude that's all about like productivity and shit and like he's a doctor and he says um just uh we're set um set input goals not output goals so like your goal should be upload a post a day or upload a video a week or up whatever, not get this many likes, get this many views, get this, get that, because you can't yeah. affect those things, but you can affect the other ones. You can meet a goal of creating blah, blah, blah things, but you'll never be able to decide how many things will happen from the audience. You know, you'll just set yourself up That's for really failure good. that way. Really good advice and mindset. I wish I had that with me sort of in the video and because it, it almost got to that point when you know you're posting every day it's like if this post doesn't get 500 then you know what's the point of carrying on or it's like extreme but you know yeah <laughs> yeah you when start I, to you know put so much value in it kind of yeah it's it's bad that's like that's like the kind of you know curse and blessing of instagram is like it's provided yeah. so much but it's taken so much away from people's like mental health and stuff uh I talked to that dude, Louis Moss, and he was talking about how sometimes he feels that he has his day job, he has this, but all that is just like the other work and his real work is waiting to post the day on Instagram, you know, like <laughs> yeah. we get, it's, but then it's obviously not that like the, the real work is the clients, the stuff that people aren't even seeing half the time the stuff you're working on for yourself like that's the real work but we get so confused yeah. and we start to think this is all that matters but i mean i hate to say it and it's scary but someone could just facebook could just take off instagram one day and be like this yeah. shit sucks we're gonna make a new app and all that stuff yeah. you cared about it's not gonna matter anymore so you really have to be like a strong creative and and diversify like the places that you exist in because it's like having one source of income or one job if it gets taken away then what are you gonna do yeah some people may be fucked without instagram like that's their whole portfolio basically and things like that yeah that's sort of where i'm at now like this month when i've you know gotten like a bit of extra cheddar or whatever I feel like now when I'm, you know, sitting here with the chatter and I'm like comfortable <laughs> kind of, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, shit, like you said, if Instagram dies, then I die too. <laughs> or like a lot of it. So it's like, that's sort of what I'm looking into now in the back of my mind, sort of like what I started, what I did like two days ago was create another account, a second account, just cause I feel like I, even that's a good backup to have, you mm -hmm. know, in case it you gets never stolen know. or something. Yeah, it's stolen or if someone decides to, you know, like people, you know, can still make people take down accounts, sort of, you know, yeah. copyright stuff and all that. So it's that's like it's true. a scary world. <laughs> yeah, that's what sucks is the bigger the bigger you get on platforms, the the more like influence you have and stuff, but the more likely someone can like try to take you out, you know, because now yeah. you're. Now you're up there with, a, you're at some kind of status where someone may think, let's steal this account or let's get it banned or let's like just yeah. fuck this person yeah. over because cause for whatever reason, you know, and that's pretty scary uh, to think about versus no one can take away your work, like for the most part that you just have 
in your computer, on your portfolio and stuff. That'll always exist. But social media, it's like, it's a lot more finite, I think, than people give it credit for. Like, it's not, it, this thing only existed for a little bit, you know? It can go away easily. Yeah. And I feel like almost this pandemic is sort of, you know, put even more you know, wait onto social media. Like everyone's just sort of, you know, solidified that, okay, social media is real life. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Cause you're not even talking to people. Control. It's just, you're, no. that's, that's the, what you're in. Um, speaking you of can just only diversify digitally pretty much. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I was wondering, you were talking a little bit about before we went on that tangent of like, that was kind of de depressing and how we're going to get our whole lives taken away one day. Other than yeah. that, um, I wanted to ask you about, cause you talked about digging for, you know, work and seeing like what you're going to do for the day and things. Um, where do you get like a lot of inspiration from for some of these kind of like surrealist, like manipulations and things? Um, I don't know. I just, I, I would consider myself like a lazy consumer. So I, I wouldn't know, you know, be able to name 10 designers off the top of my right, head that right. I'm like, these are the guys. It's more like, you know, just consuming stuff that I would consume naturally, sort of album artwork, television memories and stuff like that. And, you know, when I see something on Instagram, I'll give it a like. And, uh, yeah, I, th I think I just consume and I try to, you know, copy things and put my own spin on it, just like everyone else kind of, you know, and, you know, make that barrier between copying and figure each time you do it until mm -hmm. it's your own. But I, 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 there's a lot of, you know, what call a lot of collage artists are doing on Instagram is kind of like inspired me sort of like I kind of reversed looked at it because I was doing it and then I saw like I kind of backtracked and saw shit there's this whole community of collage artists and that is pretty much the same thing that I'm doing in one way so you know I've taken a lot of inspiration after that back in to see you know okay you can like there's so much more emotion that can be taken out of collages because you get mm -hmm. the sort of natural decay and the sort of time period pieces of like you know slightly different hairstyles and all that stuff so i i also love looking through like archives like i, I sometimes yeah. i just can browse for like four hours just looking for like a perfect image or whatever just looking through old historic <laughs> public domain images mm -hmm. it's just like being at a like a design store that everything's free <laughs> yeah because, i know, do i like doing that with um have you used that site or that site like fonts in use before? Mm, I, th I think I've ended up there on a lot of times when I've been Googling stuff. Yeah, you like have a font. Like it. It'll show you like all these old like album arts and posters and it'll just show you like this is the font that's used in there. And it's so cool just like seeing all the old uses of like Fitora and shit like that, you know, and on like these all old right. 70s album arts and things and it puts it into perspective you know rather than just seeing it on like the black the black on the white it's kind of hard to tell like if you would even like that yeah. you know before you're going to go out and buy it uh or download illegally whatever you're trying to do, whatever <laughs> you're going to do um but what was i going to say um like when you were talking about the collage art i feel like what you do is that and to, in my head, the only dis the dis main distinction between like what you would classify as collage versus what I would classify as like photo manipulation is how blended like the different things are. I feel like that's pretty much yeah. like the only difference. It, the collages have you almost want the cutout to be like raw with the pen tool, but when you're doing shit, it's almost like you want to go in there with the soft brush and like blend it all out and make it nice yeah. and clean. I like both. I like doing both versions of that thing or a mixture of the two kind of. Yeah, actually for a project I'm releasing on Friday, uh, that's the first time I've used uh, like actual collage cutting mm -hmm. or like a client work. So, and you can, it really shines through as well. Like the texture, even that you can add a million textures, but there's just something about like analog work that's just always mm -hmm. like special it's like a cheat code when you're so used to working on the computer and you I take know. a 
or on paper and it's like wow all the details on that white sheet is just crazy when you scan in the um when you get the old magazines too and you scan in the uh images like you're not going to be able to get that those like beautiful like half tones and textures that get created when you scan it i've tried like with everything you know stuff online like uh, texture supplier whatever it's called like uh, the ink lab shit from black market like everything you can get it almost but it's not the same like yeah, that shit yeah, is yeah. just like it was it's like science like it's just like some magical thing that it just creates these beautiful sh- textures and you're like damn that's nice and the older the better you know the more old yeah. magazine the cooler it looks for sure a lot of that stuff's expensive now too like i'm always on the hunt for old you know, like National Geographic or like sci-fi magazines and stuff. And people know that oh, they're yeah. cool. So they're now they're selling them on eBay for like a lot more and stuff. It's now you have to, it's a lot harder to find like those cool old magazines, the older they get. Yeah, I actually got my mom one of those National Geographic for her birthday. It was like from 1937 or something. It was super cool. But I think that was actually when before vintage got really cool. <laughs> it was like 2010, I think. Yeah. Maybe the price. I think I got it for like fifteen dollars or something. So <laughs> it was like yeah, a steal by today's standards, I would assume. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, once I get my hands on stuff like that, it's so precious that I'll just scan in the page and I'll just do the cut in Photoshop, you know, because I don't want to actually cut it out in case oh, yeah. I want to use it later for something else. You, That's the luxury we have of the computer is you could cut shit out and it could be, you could control Z and it's not cut out anymore. Yeah. But if you cut it out in real life, you know, that's permanent. Scissors are forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, I, I saw a little bit on your Instagram uh, highlight, but can you walk me through um the origin of the logo a little bit more other than what I looked at. Well, well, the origin of the name Victor H Studios to connect to that is sort of, I've always hated the way my name looks. And after, you know, consuming people like designers, humor, and all this cool guy sort of realized that everyone goes through that shit, like everyone. Yeah. So the studios was sort of just to take attention away from the Victor H sort of because I didn't like it. So it's sort of, you know, taken away that, but, uh, the logo itself, it's just like a V and mm-hmm. then an H and it's just taking that part and putting it together like a H yeah. sort of, it's pretty basic, but I mean, clean and effective, I would say. <laughs> yeah. I like it. And I like that. I like the way you use it. You know, you, you sneak it in and you make it obvious. Sometimes you have like the big ass McDonald's like type thing. Yeah. And then you have it something as small as like the braces we were talking about. And that's cool. Like, I don't, I feel like a little trademark like that or whatever you want to call it, that is easy to be like forced, you know, like people will just put it on yeah. everything or put it in the corner or like, but you've kind of made it, if, if it doesn't fit within like the elements of the design, like you don't just like throw it on top, you actually integrate it with like the concept, which I think is cool. No, thank you. Yeah. I, I also want to give a shout out to like all the skateboard brands that I love because that's a lot of inspiration Mm -hmm. (laughs) when you mentioned like the whole like uh, branding aspect as well i feel like i've taken a lot of inspiration from brands like supreme and palace and the way they integrate their brands and designs sort of like in a surreal way so i feel like i just wanted to give a shout out to them because sort of what inspires you know i want to make designs that i want to wear right in a literal sense or in a metaphorical sense but still i want to be able to wear what I design because <laughs> I'm designing for people who like what I do and what I like kind of mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah those brands like a lot of those streetwear brands and skateboard brands their whole f- like pretty much brand is different ways they could design the logo you know and like yeah, different ways much. to put it like that and then the most valuable stuff they have is the shit that's just the logo which is funny too <laughs> <laughs> it's ironic yeah yeah, it, it must be weird, you know, when you build out a brand and it gets kind of put into the like hype beast, like culture where you can do anything and like it, it's like 
impossible to get you know you could put like yeah you could literally just put like a picture of like a shit you took in the toilet and then put like a supreme like box logo or whatever on it and if that's like an official shirt like that shit will be sold out in like a second which and then you have other brands that like they have these crazy ass designs and like they're putting so much work into it and it's like no one gives them love you know it's kind of (laughs) weird yeah it's all just uh I don't know. That's just a weird, like, s- kind of psychological phenomenon. The idea of like, if you have this, like, you're cool, you know. And if no one else has it, even better. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you what's going on with that paranoid font. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I, I made, yeah, I'm, I made like two fonts that I promised I would release to the public, but I, I actually think. The first, first of all, I designed both the fonts on a trial period. Mm -hmm. First, I downloaded the trial software on my other computer and then it ran out. So I finished it on this computer, but I don't have access to that anymore. So I would have to buy it and font softwares, as far as I know, are like 500 bucks, which is something I could look into investing now, but I don't know. I I was thinking about releasing like the shitty version of this now for free, Mm -hmm. but is it like glyphs uh, or something you're using or what is it? I think it's called like font book or something, mm. the software or like font five font lab five. Yeah. Font lab five. With the, yeah. Well maybe what you can do. PNG from Photoshop. Cause I think it's cool. I, I, I would, I like the paranoid one. I like that you put it into context and it looks strong on, on posters and stuff. And it had a nice, oh, other, thank you. it was like a worm, you know, or something like the way some yeah. of the letter forms were but what i think you can do if you want to put it out i don't know if i'm like the minority in like wanting this font or if a lot of people are super interested in it or whatever but you can just do like a pre-sale or something and then maybe you'll get enough to fund the purchase of the software and then just oh, yeah. put it out that way because people everyone fucking lags on putting out shit nowadays anyway so you could probably just be like pay now and then in a month i'll get the font out and then you know if you're early uh, early like you could just like crowdsource it basically you know just yeah. fund, fund the software to make the font so i think it'll be cool and i mean like it's no, i was really into it but i feel like the momentum was so strong back then that i feel like i lost so much by doing it now you know in yeah. the sense it's like I should have done it and taken the chance and just used that momentum to sort of spike it up. But now I got to like, remember when I made this font (laughs) half a year ago, (laughs) you guys still excited about it coming soon. Do you remember this? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I was, I was looking at it, but maybe that's just because I was looking into all your old shit, but I think it'd be cool. I think you should at least try it soon or not soon, but within the year or something, I think it might be worth it. But um, I know you're talking about a couple of the things you, that you couldn't really explain that you're working on for, for like, uh, NDA or whatever it is, but, um, can yeah. you get, kind of walk me through maybe one of the most exciting projects you've worked on in the past that you felt was like your best? Oh, I feel like at this point in my career, I'm so critical that I wouldn't really stand so hard behind i'm just gonna look quickly through my instagram but i guess you can just put it more as like what was the most exciting thing you worked on regardless of how how you felt that final execution was well i guess my my biggest moment was you know getting uh jared leto from 30 seconds to mars uh and then uh, I don't want to say anything else about that. <laughs> yeah. That's cool though. Yeah. I, I see a lot yeah. of people actually work with them, which is interesting. Like yeah, they put, I, they put high value on design. Yeah. That's cool though. So that's yeah. like a thing coming up in the future. Uh, no, that's actually been done and done. Actually. Oh, it's <laughs> it's just actually not. didn't okay. work out. I see. So, I see. But yeah, I've seen, 
I've seen them like do work with Harry and Dan Barco and yeah. like, a few like UK and other artists, which is cool because a lot of bands like they don't give a fuck about design. Like they just let the label pick out like whatever. You see some of the biggest, that's why all those memes, you know, you see some of the biggest uh, uh, bands and little like uh, singers and shit that they just put out the bad album art and then you just see a thousand redesigns the next week. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's weird. I, you would think that like the bigger the artist, you know, the more they would hire some cool ass person <laughs> to design their yeah. brand. And that's why I was so surprised. Like I can't wait to tell you who it was. But it's yeah. I would have never thought that that's someone. I would have pegged them. So I would. I don't want to say anymore. Yeah. So, well, yeah, you can okay. tell me once but, yeah, it's I'm done. Super excited. Or off offline or whatever. But don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, one thing I really think that's interesting in what you do, cause I, you were talking about how you kind of reverse engineered some of the collage stuff and things, but I love seeing your stories. Like I, the thing that I like following you the most for is the stories when you either show like a process or show like some weird, like little facts in like some kind of history (laughs) or like, I think you've, you've like how do I say this what stories are meant for like telling a story and like a little quick thing to consume I think you really captured the idea of what it should be used for and actually used it for that and it's like really entertaining to look at no thank you so much man appreciate yeah. it what what kind of it's sort of oh yes I just want to know what kind of yeah like started you to want to do that kind of stuff I guess it's sort of I did some like I started doing like a few small seminars when I was a substitute teachers about mm-hmm. like sort of, you know, my uh, philosophy about life and death and stuff. And I got into, you know, making PowerPoints and sort of like the efficiency that I liked in PowerPoints was having like a clicker and I can just click. And it sort of made me look of the frames more as, you know, like frames in a, in a video clip kind of. Mm-hmm. So each, frame is a frame and I sort of apply that whole kind of PowerPoint mentality into Instagram where it's like each side is a frame and if you click it fast enough you get to see the whole picture and I don't know it's like kind of like a rewarding kind of basic human thing to you know Mm -hmm. reveal something physically and it's like I get the satisfaction just as my I hope my consumers get the satisfaction of you know putting it together and you know seeing that it all lines up so nicely and neatly and stuff like that like all the little OCD details that I try to put in that are just you know part of my need to make it neat and nice kind of Mm -hmm. it's almost like so stop motion kind of yeah yeah and it it is a PowerPoint really and it's kind of like I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do all those big like carousel accounts like that's their whole goal is to get you to go all the way to the end and try to figure out whatever the fuck they're talking about some UI <laughs> shit or something and then but I like the way you do it because with the carousels it's a lot more obvious but with the tapping it's like it's more of a mystery and a reveal mystery reveal mystery reveal each time and it's yeah. crazy to think that that kind of spawned from you being a teacher because I've felt that way in other things I've done. You do these things and you don't think they're ever going to matter. And then now I'm telling you that I like that. And you only did that because you were a teacher and it's like, yeah. you would have never thought that being a te- substitute teacher was going to make you be like, do something cool with design. You know, it's kind of weird to look at. No. There. And literally like all the free time I had while being a teacher is like what I put into the account. So it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I had a job that consumed more time, then maybe I wouldn't be here either. So, right. I really different... liked the um, the one you did with like the pyramids and how they would have looked with the limestone oh, and the yeah. water. That was cool. That that looked like something you'd actually show in a class, but then you're just, the the kids would be like, "Damn, the teacher is a good ass designer. Like, how did he do that?" <laughs> yeah. No, it's that's also like something that I'm trying to sneak in more because I I love history and you know artifacts and you talked about like vintage stuff mm-hmm. anything like vintage with you know history behind it I just love and you know 
seeing that I can compare, even like putting Easter eggs in like designs that have nothing to do, like the height of a person or anything. It's just the more I can do that is yeah, also like a bonus. With the Hollywood something. sign, just, right? You did that one on there. Yeah. Yeah. I did the height to scale <laughs> and like measured them. I put like five dudes and yeah. I like <laughs> measured it in Photoshop with all the dudes and then I took them away. So I calculated that seven dudes was about the height of the H, I think. That's funny. So <laughs> Another thing that is kind of with those stories you were doing is when you were doing the thing, copying like the other designers uh, oh, yeah. with like Elliot and the guy that does all that crazy type. I don't know how to say his name, like, Wabaki or whatever that dude, oh, yeah, yeah. a couple other ones. Um, why did you like do that? Not in a bad way. Like I thought it was cool, but what <laughs> made you think to do that? Well, how could you? <laughs> no, it, it was just sort of like, I'm trying to go back into my mind process. I guess it was sort of like, you know, seeing the design community and the way it's set up. And I, and I feel like we touched on this before, but you know, there's certain accounts that sort of found their style to such a point where they just, that is their identity and that is what they're selling. And that is how they built their brand along this sort of structure. Yep. And, uh, I was just, you know, kind of like seeing these accounts, like it's like, just like with a celebrity, if you're defined enough as a person, it's really easy to parody you to an extent. So okay, yeah. I was just looking for the accounts that had the sort of, you know, a clear enough profile where, you know, you could just take a few of the elements and you could, you know, recognize it, which is, you know, a big feat for them as well, you know, to have this sort of, oh, that's Elliot, that's yeah. Dan Barkle or whatever. So it's like, it's like a fun challenge and it's sort of like a cheeky way to, you know, cause I'm, I've gotten so many messages about being transparent about my process and how it's been a sort of iffy subject. And I haven't been part of the design world at all. So I didn't know that. And it was just sort of like, uh, like a FU kind of to like that whole premise of, you know, don't show your process. And I was like, we're all getting better by showing the process. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like a half-assed design political statement in a way. It's yeah. like, you know, it's fine to show. It's just fun. And it's just like, I, I love these designers. They inspired me. So it's like, I feel like something that would have been really like controversial two years ago, maybe people can consume it now with like, yeah, this is just fun. <laughs> yeah, that's I couldn't have said it better myself. And you're talking about how you said you're kind of new to it. And I don't know, I guess I was, I'm not much older than you I don't think in terms of our uh, Instagram design lifespan or whatever but I even maybe three four years ago it was a whole different vibe I'm telling you like people yeah. were not as cool uh, people did not talk about their process you'd ask someone like what font is this they'd be like oh it's a secret or some shit <laughs> and it's like <laughs> yeah. what the fuck are you talking about I could figure it out myself I just thought it'd be easier to ask <laughs> you you know but just yeah. stuff like that. And people were a lot more like, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll never like show my sketches. Cause like people will steal it. And it's like, even if someone steals your work, even like you just, you've shown that with those stories that you could almost perfectly rep, uh, replicate a Elliot business card or, uh, that other guy's name, uh, typography, whatever, but it's still not them. So I'm not going to, yeah. You know, I could buy a Mona Lisa that some guy painted at Venice Beach, but it's not the same thing, you know? So yeah, it's like, it doesn't matter if, if you're threatened by someone copying you and knowing how you did something, then how good is that thing anyway, to begin with? No, like that's, that's like a nightmare for a designer to, you know, be scared and wary of, you know, like if, if you see someone who like kind of copied your post, then you lose your shit and everything is about taking it down. Then it's sort of like, I've gone to a point now where I see so many people like copy or, you know, get inspired that it's like, I, I honestly, I'm just like impressed that it's like, what? That's crazy yeah. that I just, I stumble on this random account and it's like, sometimes they mention it, sometimes they don't. And it's like always just fun to see that that's a very clear, like inspiration to someone and yeah. probably like bigger accounts can go back to my work and say, oh, you totally took that from me. Right. And maybe they'll be mad or maybe they'll be understanding. Like, you know, um, you know, designer, uh, Roy Cranston. Yeah. 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 I, I talked with him. Uh, it'll be out by the time this is out, but 
Yeah, I put a reminder for that. I'm super yeah, pumped yeah. to hear Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he talked about that because, man, everyone stole his shit. When he was doing the 365 poster, like, you could go on the Explore page and it was all, like, very similar to what he was doing. Yeah. And he was talking to me about how sometimes it was so the same. His him and his friends would do like speed runs on like how fast they could find a poster that is an exact replica of like the composition. And sometimes he'd see them and be like, did I make that? Like, what the fuck? Like I, that looks exactly That's like good. I, he thought he made it and it was like a repost account, but it was just someone oh, else. Shit. Cause like everyone was yeah. doing those, the kind of big typography style shit, like black background we were talking about. But, uh, anyway, you go, go check out that episode instead of me just trying to explain what we talked about. Uh, did you, did anyone get like, how did the people think about that, that you, that you copied? Like you did a few, right? Yeah. And I guess like every single person except for one were completely like positive and like m most people, almost everyone, I, I think, except for that one person shared it on their story. Yeah. And, but the other person escalated to the point where we both blocked each other. So, I mean, it could be, you know, but, yeah, but I, I feel like that was a very clear sense of like the old, the old design community meeting mm -hmm. the new kind of like the auto tune rap with the old hip hop and kind of like clashing yeah. and those sort of interviews <laughs> you see. Yeah. That's funny. That was like Tupac that you copied and you had to block each other. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Elliot, Elliot, I would say, is on the exact opposite of the spectrum. The most like, no, yeah. no, like secrets, you know. Like he's, he's all because he's built his whole thing off of like not doing that. So, who yeah. he would never be the one? I wouldn't think to get mad at you for that or whatever. No, no, he was super cool about it. That's Even, cool like, though. <laughs> yeah. Did I think you, he's stuck um, in a burn because I misidentified the font or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny. Did uh, yeah. what was I gonna say? Um, I think that the fact that the person was upset, whoever we don't have to to say it, um, yeah. proves that it was a successful political statement because you you at least separated <laughs> yeah. two sides, you know? Yeah, yeah, I would like to think so. That's cool. Well, I'm excited to see, you know, other little PowerPoints that you put up on your story that I could consume and all the cool stuff you're doing. And hopefully we could chat again about once you finish up that other stuff, that's a secret and whatnot. But other than that, um, I appreciate you coming on, man. It was great talking to you. Yeah, man. You too. I really, yeah, it's still surreal, still awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's just been Great. Yeah, of course. And if you guys want to hear a little bit more from me and Victor, we're doing a Q and A over on the Patreon. So go check that out, and go check out Victor on Instagram, um, uh, Victor H Studio, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go check that out, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.